Hey guys, this is Austin. This is the gaming PC that we built just a few weeks ago, which has since seen some slight upgrades since the last time you've seen it. So as a little bit of a refresher, before we had a Core i7-8086K inside, a GTX 1080 Ti, we had 16 gigs of memory, 512 gig SSD, Optane memory, a 14 terabyte hard drive. This is a pretty well spec system, but in the last few weeks, there have been a few new hardware announcements if you missed them, including not only the RTX 2080 Ti, which we have installed, but also the brand new Intel Core i9-9900K. We're going from six cores on the previous high end up to eight cores with hyper-threading. If you go to the i7, you've got eight cores without hyper-threading. If you go to the i5, it's going to have six cores with no hyper-threading. No more hyper-threading. It's a sad day. Except, well, it's not really because it doesn't make a big difference, but... Yeah. So where our 8086 processor from before was a very overclockable six core chip with a five gigahertz boost out of the box, what we're getting with the i9 is actually similar performance. So the base clock is 3.6 gigahertz, but right out of the box without having to touch anything, we can hit five gigahertz. And believe me when I say, a little bit of overclocking, this thing should be impressive. But uh, unlike most videos where we spend lots of time benchmarking and testing, today we're doing something a little different. I'm going to do all this live and see exactly just how powerful this Core i9 is paired with the RTX 2080 Ti. I hope this all goes well and not like one of Linus's videos where he spends three days troubleshooting some obscure technical issue. It all looks like it works though, so. So this is the first time that we've had a full 8-core processor on the consumer side for Intel. Now Ryzen has been around for a few years and that does actually support a full 8-core chip, but this is a little bit more expensive and hopefully a little bit more powerful. So the first thing I'll do is run a quick Cinebench. Uh, the 8086 ran something like a 212 on single core, so let's see how close we can get with this. So while we're running the test, it's looking like around 4.4 to 4.5 gigahertz. Actually, yeah, I don't know why this is not boosting higher. I mean, it's a perfect single threaded workload. It should be at a five gigahertz or at least somewhere around that. But we're pretty much topped out at 4.4 to 4.5. I wonder uh, <laughs> if uh, the technical problems are already beginning. Um, 190, yeah, that's, <laughs> man, that's lower. So we got like 210 or so on the 8086, and that's 100% because this is not boosting up higher. I can't even get one benchmark done. I'm all happy, like, yeah, cool. We got, you know, no technical problems, because it all works. I've been doing this for five seconds, and we're already not going well. Oh no, the internet dropped, didn't it? You gotta be kidding that, right? <laughs> Look at that. No internet, great. This is like the lamest version of the video I had in mind possible. <laughs> One quick BIOS update later, we have something that should boost a lot quicker. So if I start the single core, ideally we see, oh yeah, 4.9, 4.9, five gigahertz, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Now again, this is not overclocked. Running on a single core, this chip should easily hit five gigahertz. And especially if we're able to actually put a little bit more overclock through it. Oh man, I'm so happy. It's always great when it's not a huge issue and it's something really simple like I forgot to get the most recent BIOS instead of the one right before that. Okay, so our first run was 190 before the update and there we go, 213. So it's almost exactly what we got at the 8086, which does make sense. As far as single thread performance goes, they're both Skylake cores and they both can boost to five gigahertz. The real test is when we switch over to the multi-core. <laughs> That's so much better. Man, I've just done sentiment so many times. It's nice to see that many threads just chewing it up. So for reference, the last time we got about just under 1400 on the 8086, but with two more cores, and we're still boosting it. Look at that, 4.7 gigahertz on all eight cores. Look at that, it's just, it's done. Whoa, 2078? That is actually, that's actually, wait, why is it? That's really high. Hang on a second. What's the, the difference there? Dude, that's almost 40% faster. So I guess there's a couple reasons behind that. One of which would be, of course, we do have two more cores that's naturally going to kick in some performance. And we were able to stay at 4.7 gigahertz the entire time. I think a big part of that is that unlike the older series chips, which where it did have a little bit of thermal paste in between the heat spreader and the chip, instead we actually have solder now, which does dissipate that heat a little bit better and allows it to boost really high out of the box. That's cool. That actually, <laughs> that's cool. Hey, I see what you did there. Before we get too far into it though, let's actually get a little bit of 3D Mark going. Oh, did the internet drop again? <laughs> no, it didn't, did it? That's great, when it turns on for five minutes and then drops back out. Makes this video super easy to do. 
After a little bit of internet TLC, it's back up and it's time to run TimeSpy. So this is a benchmark which is primarily going to test our RTX 2080 Ti, but with that Core i9 on board, it should help out a little bit, but I'm mostly curious to see how it actually stacks up compared to our previous setup with the 1080 Ti. For reference, our previous score, completely stock mind you, was 9,487 in TimeSpy. So that's what we've got to beat. I think we've got a pretty good shot. So this is a founder's edition of the RTX 2080 Ti, and just like with the CPU, we're not doing any kind of overclocking right now. I wanna get a pure apples to apples benchmark, then we can get a little bit more of the fun stuff going. All right, not bad. So we went from 9,400 all the way up to 12,641. And one of the big things I think helped us there is the CPU score is 11,000. That's not bad. Oh, right, I need to upgrade. <laughs> I need to upgrade my time spy. Would the score have been different? Yeah, it's a totally different score. It's, it's a different test. It unlocks a 4K version of the test. Oh, we should, yeah. Yeah. That's gonna take a little while. $10 later, I have now upgraded my Time Spy for the full 4K version. Now, I actually don't have the numbers on what this was like on the 1080 Ti in the previous setup, but I'm curious to see how it performs against, well, I guess everyone else's 2080 Ti numbers? Wait, why are we doing this? Everyone else is like overclocking. This is like totally stock. There's no point of running it in 4K. Ken, did I just waste $10 for nothing? It's for... For science? Science. Interesting. This is totally different than the normal version. 6100, wow, that's actually really fast. Wow, so I've not tested any other 2080 Ti setups, but that's actually a little bit quicker, and I think that's mostly because of the i9. Well, actually, to be fair, we are running the, uh, the Founders Edition. So, benchmarks, cool, but let's actually play some real games. Smash got to me playing Fortnite. <laughs> so, with a little bit of Dave's favorite gameplay from the bus, full epic settings, 4K, Fortnite is a uh, pretty smooth 85, 90 frames per second. As we drop, we're getting a little bit closer to the uh, high 70s, maybe? Yeah, it's, uh, you can play Fortnite, in case you were curious. You know what's kind of nice about this setup? It's surprisingly quiet. Even though we've got the Founders Edition, which definitely does not have the best kind of cooling, there's definitely some aftermarket cards which have much, much beefier coolers that'll get a lot more airflow going. But this is actually a fairly quiet system. And keep in mind that this is with the side panel off. Oh, you know what, if I jump on here, I can uh, parachute, can't I? This is battle, this is playground. Oh, okay, maybe I can't do that. Got it, okay, that's great. A little bit of PUBG action, again, 4K ultra settings. And here, running around in this completely empty area with no other people to test it with, we've got 78 frames per second. This is the way to do it, right? You walk around all the people who are just sitting in the lobby, not doing anything. This actually is a reasonable stress test, though. PUBG does definitely scale based on how many characters you have on screen at once. You know, it's funny, even at 4K ultra settings, PUBG, still not the nicest looking game around. Is it too late to test Call of Duty Blackout? All right, we are in the game and we've got a Pretty impressive 80 frames per second. This is, actually it's kind of impressive that with a single GPU and with a consumer, oh, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad, okay. So that is just a little taste of what you can expect out of the Core i9-9900K as well as the RTX 2080 Ti. Definitely stay tuned. This is not the last time you're going to see this PC on the channel.